The OLED watt meter has a a native, an internal measuring range from 15 dBm down to minus 75 dBm. Now, 15 dBm equates to a very close to 32 milliwatts. In other words, I can put 32 milliwatts maximum into this thing without hurting it. And what I've done in my previous videos is to use an attenuator. I try to anticipate what the input power to the attenuator or the output power from the device under measurement is and I try to reduce that power to 15 dBm or less. Now for that purpose I've had sometimes attenuators in series. Now the attenuation is a simple addition of if you have more than one, just add them together. But I assume we're generating this RF watts for a reason. And, and it probably costs some money to generate it. It's a shame to burn it up in heat, turn it into heat, so we can measure it. So what I want to do is build an RF tap. The way the tap will work is a sample of the power passing through the tap. Say our RF generators here and here is, I don't know, a heating oven or in most cases an antenna. I want to sample the energy here and then output that sample to the little watt meter. 200 watts is 53 dBm. If I had a 40 dB attenuator I would be able to take 55 dBm of power attenuate it down to 15 dBm. So I've selected a 40 dB power tap. 40 decibels of attenuation will allow me to read 400 watts maximum on this little OLED power meter. What well, turns out that 40 dB power tap is a very popular selection. The web is full of 40 dB power taps. They all seem to have the same genesis and that is an article published in June 2001 in the ARRL or Amateur Radio Publication QST. And the authors of the article are Wes Hayward and Bob Larkin. I'm not familiar with Barb Larkin. I wasn't involved in RF work in the, th in the 2000s. Wes Hayward though is a very well known person in the RF world. In any event, Hayward and Larkin developed a 40 decibel tap and this is a drawing of that mechanism. Oh, this is a photograph of it. This is another article and they've just it is just exactly the same. And there are two or three other ones on the web that are exactly the same as this. Probably because the Hayward-Larkin 
design was very, very good and very repeatable. The attenuator consists of a pass-through section and a resistive sampling section, which is connected to an output port. There's a, a brass plate here that in the parts list is identified as an inductor. Then these three resistors. The three resistors total 2,475 ohms. And then there's a 50 ohm resistor that uh, terminates the sample tap in 50 ohms. This whole thing is designed for use at 50 ohms uh, impedance in whatever the devices and cable you have that might be handling RF. The box used in the project is this Hammond uh, 1590A. Now I intended to make this out of uh, solder together pieces of circuit board. The box is available from Mauser Electronics for $6.40. Or, in my case, I bought it for $10 uh, on eBay. Instead of N connectors and BNC connectors, I'm going to try to use SMA connectors. I've settled on the two-hole style which cost two dollars a piece. The original design used three 820 ohm resistors in series. Now this whole thing is enclosed in a metal box with, with no holes in it. So there's no ventilation. The original design used half watt resistors and with three resistors there we can safely dissipate the maximum dissipation not safe would be one and a half watts I decided to use two three watt resistors in series which gives me a total dissipation ability of six watts but I always design a circuit so that the resistors are rated for double the anticipated dissipation. So I would rate two 3 watt resistors in series as having a heat, a continuous dissipation rating of 3 watts. But it still doubles the allowable heat dissipation because if these are half watt resistors the allowable dissipation is one and a half watts or maybe three quarters of a watt if you use the 50 percent safety factor. I downloaded a drawing of the, a two hole SMA connector. I redrew it in AutoCAD and I could have made 20 of these I guess but I printed out templates drilling templates for the SMA connector then I began assembling my components here's the little Hammond box and its lid and screws here are the two hole SMA connectors and I have some number three screws, as machine screws, lock washers and nuts. I have some 1.2K 3 watt metal film resistors. And I have a half watt 51 ohm resistor. So I'll measure up my Hammond enclosure and 
drill three sets of holes and I'll replace these connectors in the picture and this one with the three hole SMA connectors. So here we have a, the base of our little box and I've fastened some drilling templates on it. I'm going to end this video now. There will be a part two. Maybe a part three. I don't know. Thank you for watching.